Greetings and welcome back to Factorio Beginner's Guide with myself, that is Avak. I was told off for saying myself Avak because people assumed there was a comma there where there wasn't. And my good friend Shen. How are you doing, Shen? Well, I just want to point out that clearly your name is Count Avacula, not Avak. Ah. So perhaps that was the confusion. That, that like, is you, true. You can't that see is it. True. You can't, I can't see my name. My name could be Poopy Pants. I don't know. Uh, but your name is, is it all meant to be? Because I mean, it, <laughs> oh, oh, that's uh, awkward. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. We have done a little bit off camera, and as we mentioned in the last episode, at least part of this episode is going to be focused on well, killing things. Uh, yeah. We're not we going to paint it, it as anything it isn't. We we're researched go. it, Avak. We got to do it. Yeah, it's true. It. It's true. We've got to put all of all of these tax dollars to good use. Only we didn't pay for it, so it's fine. Right, I am going to continue uh, follow a robot count so that we can have some extra f um, robots following us around, helping us out in our tanks. Why we'd need it, I don't know, but it'll be fun. So I'm just going to pop that down. But whilst we've been away, Shen has upgraded our concrete smelting. He's added some uh, brick furnaces because we exhausted our supply of bricks so we that's a very small bricks. little change there and you know what we learned we what? learned that you need bricks to make steel furnaces <laughs> yes. i'm like like Abek, do you have any steel furnaces no <laughs> we had to build old <laughs> tech stone furnaces to build the steel furnaces uh what was that we've done a fair bit of concreting though which is why we ran out of bricks now we've also been running into power woes now, part of right. that has been slightly fixed by adding accumulators, because some of our power woes only happened during peak usage. That is when our lasers were firing. So we added accumulator arrays, which you'll notice are actually currently empty. This is a really mm -hmm. bad sign, because we're not shooting anything, and they're empty. That means we've got a, a really difficult power situation right now. If we look at one of our electric poles, it says the electric demand satisfaction. That's only about three quarters of our demand is being satisfied by our current setup. We need more juice. Indeed. But these accumulators, the way they work is when there's an energy surplus, they start to charge, their energy bar fills up, and then when there's an energy deficit, they start to discharge. So they can plug a gap. They are great for things like lasers, which only use their energy some of the time. And they'll use quite a lot, so it's a sudden peak in your energy demand, but then that flattens out very quickly, and it would give the accumulators time to charge back up. So they can just... It's basically like a battery. It's effectively mm -hmm. what it is. Well, but in the south... Indeed. In the south, we have discussed that that's where we're going to start our solar farm. And since we have solar being produced, we might as well start putting down a solar farm. We did a little bit of this off camera. I think I'm going to change the design a bit, but the general concept is we're going to have these substations. Now, now we did discuss this last time. The substations have this gigantic 14 by 14 range. So just one substation in the middle of a whole bunch of these uh, solar panels and accumulators will mean we can fit uh, a whole bunch of them without actually mm -hmm. needing any more poles. So it, it's like having a, a city filled with roads without the roads because you only need this giant node, this uh, huge electric substation. You don't need all the little things around it. Yeah. In any case, since we have a ton of accumulators in the north, I'm going to change the design down here. We don't need the accumulators down here. I'm just going to do all panels. Okay. Well, all that's, uh, panels. That's pretty good. But I do want to have a little walkway in the middle here. That is going to change things. Okay. Right. Well, I'll help you out by uh, moving some of these things around so you can just place things as you want. Sounds good. The... Explosive factory has been set up. It was very, very simple, much like almost all of the other factories. I've also set up a... Um, piercing shotgun shell production facility All right, there we go oh we gotta move the concrete now darn it well yes i was wondering when you'd realize that <laughs> um i mean with the the accumulators oh i see you can kind of have like a, a petal effect oh, that's that's actually quite nice yeah that's that's pretty cool let me uh drop off these accumulators that i just picked up though there you go and oh, thank you. Uh, that is I've, so weird when you pick up concrete. <laughs> yes, yeah, it, it is kind of bizarre that one. I like right. it though. Whilst you're doing that, I'm going to uh, quickly pop up and just show off the 
shotgun manufacturer. It is literally a mirror image of the piercing regular rounds uh, fact uh, factory complex. So I didn't really think that we needed to cover that on camera. I simply extended down the input. It uses exactly the same input, that is copper and steel, and outputs in much the same way. So we've got these areas now producing the piercing shotgun shells, and they are very, very good at what they do. The uh, damage is 16 times 6 plus 3.6. So 16 is that it shoots 16 pellets. Even though the image more or less gives you, uh, gives you the impression that it's a solid slug being fired from your shotgun, it is not. Now, over here we have the explosive setup. And this is just bringing in some water and then the cop uh so the coal and the sulfur as we discussed at the end of the last episode and just going down the middle and then we've got got our uh, um explosives being produced now i'm going to quickly set up a wee bit of a cannon round manufacturing area because we do want to be able to shoot things when we get our tanks made we do yeah, I know, I know. That sounds I know. so unfriendly, Abak. I know. We are going to be... Well... I mean, I, I I hazard to say we're going to be scallywags, but we're going to be scallywags. Ah, darn it. I wanted to be a friend of the biters. Can't we just coexist? Can't we just get along? Uh, sure, if you want to try. I don't, re I don't think it's going to go as well as you think, but yeah, go for it. As swell as you think? Right. Now, the way the cannon rounds, we are only going to be using the regular cannon rounds, not the explosive cannon rounds. Now, the reason for that is, as I mentioned, explosive cannon shells, they have a piercing power of 30, a range of 30, physical damage of 30, and an explosive damage of 80. It has an AoE, though, of 4, so it's a, it's a small, it's an appreciable AoE. The regular cannon shells, same range, but 10 times the piercing capability. So any biter armor really isn't going to matter against a regular cannon shell. Does 150 damage in physical, that's five times more, and does 50 explosive. So only slightly less than the explosive shell, but it has no AOE whatsoever. So we're just going to have to be better at aiming our guns, which you know, right. makes sense to me anyway. We don't really want to be just going around shooting willy-nilly. I don't know. Uh, I, I could see you and I being a little crazy. Why not? What? No, me never. Yeah, you. I, you. I am. I am very, very. Uh, Go on. Very Let's careful with my ammo. I conserve it. I don't. I don't spend bullets like they're candy. I Bullet. take my time to properly aim. There well, we on go. that note, I think we've got a decent solar setup down here. Okay, we I have will come down between have a all of the substations. Gander in just a moment. Now, although we're kind of hemming things in a little bit here, with our tanks, they're going to be a very infrequent thing for us to use. You're only really going to want tanks for occasional um, occasional skirmishes against the biters rather than as the, the main part of your attack force. So I don't think we need to worry too much about only having four factories producing the cannon shells. You oh, could no, make it a little bit better, but I, I really don't think we need to worry about that. Those. Uh, I would also like some lights, just because it gets a little bit dark at night time. Oh yeah, time. lights. That's what I should put in here. That's what I should do. Got 17 on me, I do. Now, 17. the nice thing with this is all of our ammo is being produced in the same area. Our piercing rounds, which we'll also be using the tanks because they do have a machine gun on top. We have our piercing shotgun shells, and we will have our piercing um, cannon shells as well. So. I think this is a, a particularly nice little setup, even though it isn't really expandable, which is something that, that I lament, but... Right, these take eight seconds to produce. We easily produce all of the requ uh, required components in that time, so this is going to very quickly be producing the shells. Now, each cannon, I think, can only have one stack, and I think they stack up to 50. We'll, we'll double-check that in time, but in the meanwhile... Um... Actually, I'm not going to limit this chest. Well, actually, no, I am. That's that's dumb. <laughs> that is really dumb. I'm going to limit that chest. We're not going to use that many cannon shells. 
Right, let me go down and check on Shen's solar farm. Ooh, we've uh, finished some more follower robot count. That's quite nice. We could do a little bit more. Or we could go for the combat robot damage. I think we'll go for damage just to make the robots that we'll have following us that little bit more deadly. Right, let's have a gander then. Oh, that's a, that's a bit of a better design there. Yeah, I, I like that. Now, as with anything else we do, this is nowhere near efficient. Um, no. There, there are people who have painstakingly calculated um, down to sort of mathematical perfection, or rather optimization. I, I, I always hazard to use the word perfection, but um, they've optimized setups of, of solar farms to get the most bang for buck for varying different things, like the most bang for buck for resources, or most bang for buck for for the area that you need to set them up in. Because even just looking at this, you can see that a solar farm actually does take up a lot of room to set up, unfortunately. But this looks nice. And, well, as as you know, I I consider aesthetics to, to trump pretty much everything else. Well, there's going to come a point in your gameplay where if you want to finish the game as fast as possible, go for it. Then you're not going to worry too much about how things look. But you're also going to reach a point like we have where you're kind of feeling comfortable with your situation. You don't really feel the biters are like an imminent threat. And they're really not. Like, we have defenses up, and they're not really bothering us that much right yeah. now. So I, I think aesthetics at that point trumps everything. I mean, it makes the game more fun to have a, a pleasing factory to look at. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, Shen, we are we're yeah. producing cannon shells. Show, show me the cannon shell setup because I didn't get to see that on my oh, on my screen here. Certainly. Uh, what I was going to say is we're producing cannon shells, so the next step will be to actually build the tanks that will shoot them. But here we go. It's fairly uh, fairly simple. A little little setup here. The reason why I've set up the the belts this way is the recipe for cannon shells calls for four steel, two plastic, one explosives. So as steel is being used just a little bit over twice as... Uh, it's a little bit over half of the input of a cannon shell. It made sense to give that the largest throughput. The plastic and certainly the explosives didn't need nearly an entire belt to themselves. So I just had those to split a belt for the uh, sake of convenience. But how many cannon shells do we have now? We've got 44. We've almost got one full tank's worth of cannon shells. Well, I'll take half of those if you want the other half. Certainly, I'll grab those. Okay. I've, I've got some combat shotgun shells. I've got my combat shotgun. Might want to grab I've got materials in my 100 pocket for... uh, piercing rounds as well. I've got materials in my pocket to build a tank. I, really? I, I think I want to start using a tank. I need to go get materials for a tank. What do I need? I need iron gears and I need an engine unit. Do we have someone making engine units? We have engine units, yeah. Oh, yes, we, we do. We built those ages right ago, here. my lord. Box. We're going we're to need them for robots, so that's why we have the production That is line. true, yes. Okay, well, I, I'm making myself a tank. One oh, thing we don't grand. have is a nice tank door. You're going to need a big, wide area. Oh, I've made some larger tank doors. Base. They're four wide, but we could expand them. Oh, I see. You have done that. Nice. Ah, uh, see? Thinking ahead. <laughs> now, the question is, how much do you trust your driving? Because if you don't trust it very much, we can expand these tank doors. I think it's fine. Uh, in fact, we'll I'll probably bump bit. into it once an episode or something. I don't know. <laughs> once an episode. Not just once. So the tank, uh, I'll bump the tank into recipe it. is pretty simple. Engines, steel plates, red circuits, and iron gears. It's really not a complicated recipe. No. no it's and actually it, really it's, simple. It's a vehicle that you keep in your inventory. So you can just drop it out of your pocket whenever you want. And you can pick it back up, too. Just like a, just like a locomotive engine. It, it does genuinely amuse me. <laughs> uh, like, it... It makes me giggle on the inside that it it's faster to build a tank than it is to build an oil derrick. Like, yeah. a lot faster to build a yeah, tank half, than it is. Half a second for a tank. Yep. Half a second. And the oil derrick is 20 seconds. So it's 40 times faster to build a tank. Mm -hmm. What, you don't, you don't build tanks in half a second? Dude, <laughs> I, I, know, I, yeah. I make 13 tanks before a cup of coffee is finished pouring. Wow. You got it Sorry. very early in the morning. <laughs> so what should we do first with our um, with our wonderful tanks? It looks like we're getting hit down in Stonington. Well, I think the we first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up construction yeah. of a bunch of mm -hmm. defender capsules so I can also deploy uh, robots. Wow, oh. they are actually breaking Stonington. We need to get down there. 
Well, good thing my tank is done. Is your tank done? Yes, my tank my is tank in fact go? done. Donk. Where did my tank go? Now, I have you got fuel blocks enough for your tank? No, that's something we need is fuel. Good yeah. point. I'm going to go and grab a stack of fuel blocks. It's one thing I forgot to hoover up on the way. There we go. You're coming with me. <laughs> Just eating it all. Yep. That is more than enough fuel. Oh, yeah. And since I'm all the way down here anyway, I'm going to uh, grab myself some extra tank shells. There we go. Oh, no, actually, they stack more than 50. They uh, Mine is up to 61. There's still some down there if you want to grab it. That's okay. I'll just use 22 for now. Okay. And I'll put some piercing ammo into the machine gun. As Avak mentioned, they have a tank cannon, which requires either cannon shells or explosive cannon shells. And it also has a machine gun, which is not the best weapon in the world, but it'll get the job done. It's the same as the machine gun that, that we use. It's 15 yeah. range, 15 speed. And it uses the regular ammo in there as well. And it has a huge trunk. I'm not sure if we covered that, but yeah, vehicles like oh, yeah. your cars and your tanks have a giant uh, capacity for storage. So if you want to run out there and put some stuff in the tank and mm -hmm. just run around with your combat shotgun, why don't we do that? Why don't we run out there and run around with a combat shotgun and go nuts? Yeah, Kinda sure, fun. I'm down with that. Um, one thing with the tank, you don't need fuel blocks. You can run it on coal. And if you really want to, you can run it on wood. You know you what can else have... you can run it on? What? You can run it on telephone poles. Really? I think so. That is amazing. And yes, if you're in multiplayer, then the uh, color of the tank will change to the uh, person controlling it. It's glorious. These can move much we... faster, just like real tanks. Tanks are actually not slow. Off... The, the whole thing about tanks being slow. Taking out the, um... Well, let's, let's show what the tank can do. I'm going to run over this rock. See that? I took some damage, damage yeah. but the rock is gone. Now, when you get in the tank, remember that the tank will switch to the tank's weapon. So your right. button for switching weapon then controls whether you're using the machine gun or you're using the main cannon. Bang! There we go. You can shoot without being able to see because the, those shells will so travel good. a very great distance. All right, so I need to turn and stop. Is there a break? I don't think so. Uh, I don't think so. You can just press enter and get out, but uh, do make sure it's stationary at the time, otherwise you may kill yourself. All right, get out, repair. Uh, easy, easy. I should have brought along more repair packs. Unfortunately, I was a bit of a derp and did not. Do you need some? Uh, yeah, actually, let me uh, pop out. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh-huh. Right, I'm going to get ready. Did you get any uh, combat uh, robots at all? Uh, I didn't bring any. I'm not, Do you want some? I'm just going to run around the shotgun. Nah, it's all good. Okay. Uh, let's take out... This was, right. I, the only thing I see on my map is the... Uh, oh, I see a biter attack on the right. Yeah. You see that? I think we should head down there and just clear out the biter bases around Stonetown. In fact, there's one a little bit to the north, but we've got enough let's guns go to up Stonetown. There. Let's go to Stonetown. Yeah. Let's find out which one's the uh, offending fighter base. I love the sound of these tanks. And watch what yeah. we do to this. Watch what we do to these trees. Yeah, this is going to be quite fun. <laughs> Crash. I mean, this is the armor bar. When you start taking damage, much like uh, your player when it starts taking health damage, that's the only time you'll see the HP bar show up. Oh, there's a little biter hut on the left. Oh, so there is. All right, so uh, should we go for the hut first? Prioritize the hut. You can just run over the biters if you want to. It really doesn't matter. I'll use the machine gun. Splat. There you go. There we go. Nice. Now, will we also pick up by driving over this stuff with the tank? Yes, yes we will. Oh, that's glorious. Yes, you do. It auto picks up. Let me repair just a little bit. I think you should as well. Yeah, I took a little bit of damage because I was running over the biters. It actually is a lot more damaging to your tank, uh, in my experience, to run over biters than it is to run over rocks. Biters right, are running, deceptively massive, it appears. Running through biter huts is actually not that bad. Okay, so here's Stoneton, and you can see there are some damaged turrets here. Let's see, where is the damage? Yeah, there is a little bit of damage on you. Let me see if I can navigate through this forest without breaking my tank at all. Oh, yeah, wonderful. Yeah, I see the... No, well, I actually don't see the damage. Do yeah, I don't see what was broken, no. Okay. How curious. Either way, 
there have been several attacks down here, so uh, let's go and kill things. I'm going to deploy a couple of robots around me while I go. And we can start killing things as well. So what I did there is I used the cannon to take out the hut, and then I switched to machine gun with tab and took out the biters. Simple, simple. I'm going to just take my uh, robots over here with me. There you go. Well done, robots. The robots making very quick work of those biters. Also, I should note that the uh, cannon shells, the tank cannon shells actually go through objects. So I lined up my first shot to take out two huts, and it actually got halfway through the health of the second hut. Ah, very nice. Now, there's a little bit of oil further out to the uh, west there. In fact, there's actually quite that, a lot yeah. of oil. Oh, I love that explosion when your followers yeah. die. <laughs> my robot's just like, ah, we've run out of batteries. We're not just going to crash to the ground. We are self-destructing. We don't want to fall into enemy hands, etc., etc. So, fair enough. There we go. I will try to do the same. So, cannon shell away. There we go. I'll just let them follow me. My robots will wipe them out. I'll just draw them away since they all want to fight me at the moment. In fact, let me it's switch to my machine gun. Your tank cannon actually outranges the worms. Oh, yeah. Tanks are amazing for that. Okay, let's go for the large worms. And these are almost all dead. There is I'm no way we could have done shows. that with just ourselves. Absolutely no way. <laughs> there would have been so many different shades of dead. Oh, still a base here. There we go. Sorted. Taking out the worms as well. The small worms go down in one hit, it seems. Still another... Another pod. Oh. All done. Excellent. There we are. And virtually no damage to my tank though. Wow, Shen, your tank is oh, on its last legs. I just sat there and shot all the all the huts down. So I'm out Fair of uh, cannon shells. I've totally got 30 left. I've gone through about uh, half of my total cannon shells at the moment. I can just run into the next base. Let's, let's show how the tanks... Whoa, don't run me over. Uh, Let's don't show worry. how the tanks can run over uh, huts. Sure. It's a little bit hard to see, but yeah, let's let's go. I'll take care of the uh, followers that are running around because there are blue Bye, followers but. now. <laughs> there we go. You took a fair old chunk of damage from there. Right, but it did destroy the hut. Indeed. And that's the fastest way to take out a hut. I'm gonna go and deal with this little base over here. If I can right, see I'll it. You. Okay. Let's try and take you down if I can. There we go. That's the main part of this place gone. Okay, you're again on my nerves. I'm just going to wipe you out with my machine gun while I can. There we are. Oops. That is bad. I uh, crashed into the into the water. Not a good you time. Oh, wow. I almost shot you. I don't be. think... I don't <laughs> think... Uh, your tank would like me if I shot him, no. You're a madman. Indeed. Right, well, that was actually quite cathartic, actually. We wiped <laughs> out a lot of the uh, pests that have been causing us issues down here. Well, thank you very much for helping me repair that. Wonderful. I'm almost out of repair packs. We should probably head back. Yeah, we at did, this we point. a lot of good there. Man. Yeah, yeah, we've got probably and quite a lot of um, cotton candy this, as well. This point in your technology... We should probably put a door down here. This uh, point in your technology one. is where... Um, Actually, we have a door. Nice. Oh, 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 oh. Ooh, I almost crashed. This Go point of your technology is probably where you're going to have a lot of fun with tanks. I did crash! Did crash. Damn it! <laughs> Oosh. There we go. Oh, and your brake is... I still crashed. Ah, no! Right. Okay. I'll just repair things. We also need to repair a couple of the turrets down the bottom. They've taken a fair old pounding, actually, over time. Oops. Expand the wall a bit. There we go. There we go. That one is almost broke. Yikes. It's just as well that we came through and wiped out those bases, because they have been uh, doing a number over our poor turrets, unfortunately. That's okay. Let them have a fighting chance, right? Or should I say <laughs> a biting chance? No, no, you shouldn't. <laughs> so as far as what you can safely run over in your base, belts can be run over. Mm -hmm. And they are not damaged. 
that's it. Everything yeah. else that you put down will be destroyed by a tank. Uh, that's not true. Concrete is not destroyed either. Yeah, yeah. But, but anything that you can walk over yourself can be walked be over damaged. by a tank. Right. Um, right. But although you can walk around things like your uh, power poles, tank's a little bit bigger, a little bit less, yeah. uh, l less nimble. So uh, you'll yeah, just smash it. Basically, if there's anything on the map that you bump into, in power poles you do bump into. Yeah. It's just you automatically walk around them when you bump into them. So yeah. that's why you, you go avoid them. But the tanks, you know, you know they're not really not, not too good at avoiding things, I don't think. Yeah. It's not, not that they couldn't. It's just they don't, they want, don't to. want to. Yeah, yeah, they don't want to. I'm a tank. Screw you, I'm a tank. They say it in that voice as well. If you ever get a talking tank, that's how it talks. True facts. We have a lot of repair packs, have I? There are thousands in this chest. Yes, I know. Well, it's been running for a very long time. But I'm afraid, talking about running for a long time, so is this episode. So it's about time for us to wrap it up, I think. Shen, do we have any plans for the next episode? Hmm, that is a darn good question. I think next episode we could tackle a little bit of railroad complexity. Ooh. I think we should go hook up some iron and possibly some stone off to the west. That that's sounds where, very that's where we good. Out some bases. What I will do, though, um, off camera is since we're going to be looking at railroad complexity, I'm going to start researching rail signals. So that'll be done for when you get back. And if that gets done as well, I'll uh, probably start working on just increasing lab efficiency and things like that. And just the things you've already seen as research. So until next time thank you very much for joining us we hope you've enjoyed and that these episodes have been informative but until oh. next time oh is this one thing i forgot saying? about man yeah. i hope no one closed the episode just yet we actually added a second cracking area for light right. oil to petroleum gas because we were running out of petroleum gas and our our plastic supply had slowed down yeah but now that we have added a cracking area uh, our plastic supply is fine and this is something that you can just turn on or off by removing a pipe so if I remove this pipe, the cracking stops. Yeah. And we can just put that on or off as we need. And since this is almost full with petroleum gas, I'm just going to turn off the cracking for now. Yep, yeah, by all means. Right. Well, thank you very much for joining us, everyone. We hope you enjoyed and will be joining us for the next. As always, any feedback you'd like to leave us, just drop a comment down below and we'll be sure to read and reply where we can. But until next time, do take care. Have a good day.